What's cracking, everybody? Let me take the headphones off today. What's cracking, everybody, man? Uh, welcome back to the channel. New video. Today's video, you see the thumbnail, you see the title. You know what? It's hard for me to do it without. I got to at least hear some of this, right? Probably sounds weird, but let me do my thing. <clears throat> you see today's title, see today's video. And I want to I want to start by saying there's no uh, problems between Damian Porter and I. Damian Porter is somebody that I was in Hawaii with. We knew each other as kids. Um, he's a very good dude. He has a great channel. Go ahead and check out the Damian Porter channel. He did a two part series on the Pelican Bay riot. After the first part. Um, I talked to him. I had talked to Damien before he did anything, just so so everybody's aware. Uh, we discussed it a lot. You know, we had a good conversation about it. And, you know, I, I, he's, I, I guess, had to have had conversations with other people, too, um, blacks. Now, <clears throat> normally I wouldn't even respond to a video like this. Um. Because it's a lot of propaganda. Normally, I'm like, I can't change people's minds. People are going to believe what they want to believe. But on this one, there's two big factors, right? One is the homie Sharky lost his life that day. Shouldn't have. Second of all, I know Damien didn't do it intentionally. At least I, I don't. I, the, the person that I knew wouldn't have done it intentionally. However, the fact remains that the picture painted was that the Raza were cowards. And so I had to, I had to speak up. Keep in mind that I was there. Um, so let's go ahead and, and, and let me, let me talk about a couple things. Okay. I want to clarify some things. I may have even been wrong in some of the things. Well, in one thing that I said, I may have in thinking of what I'm saying, uh, when I was talking to Damien, who I know is China, man, um, I may have overlooked something. And so what I'll do is I'll go back. We'll talk about videos. You can go back to other videos that I made. So. This whole thing. Well, let's just do it. And, 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 and I want to I want to preface this with this. There's nothing impressive about. That riot. It's a fucking failure. There was a failure of communication that led to a lot of hurt people and the loss of life. Okay. So I want to preface it with that. I've tried to not talk about who wins and loses. But I have to, because of what's being put out there, I have to, I have to say certain things to clarify Give me one second, because I see this stuff is clicked. I, I don't know if, um, let, me see, let me bring this gain down a little bit. Hopefully it still sounds good. Um, give me one second. I'm, I'm doing this on the fly. Hello, hello. Okay, hopefully that sounds good. <clears throat> but there's, I have to do this video. I have to. Then I hope it's the last video that's ever done on this topic, at least, especially for me. Okay. Monster was a J-cat. I don't know the whole, allegedly he was a J-cat, supposedly he was a J-cat. He was a J-cat. I don't know if, if China hasn't spoken to anybody that was there, a black man that was there, but I was there. Monster lived directly, directly. Beneath me. 
Okay. And um, I already told the story. He was a crip, but he wore a kufi. We didn't know. Was he a Muslim crip? Like, what is he? We didn't know. But he wears kufi on the yard at times. He would go to the yard and he would have an entire fo football game all by himself. He was a quarterback, throw the ball, and then he was a wide receiver, scored a touchdown every time. I told the story. This is behavior you do not see on level fours. This is behavior that we as Rasa would not have allowed because we would have known he would have brought us into some shit. So I'm going to be more, more, more upfront. He should have been dealt with. His people should have seen him coming. And say, you know what, that dude on that yard, that dude is going to be a liability at some point. But no, people rolled the dice. Okay. He was in a shop. Homies were having a conversation. He's walking by. He has nothing to do with that conversation. He side bus. That ain't the way it went down. And, and, and the homie jumped, turned around and said, well, why don't you mind your own fucking business? This ain't your conversation. Stay out of it. Monster says, well, if you don't like it, we can handle it. The homie jumped up. So did the rest. The homie went towards him. Monsters backing up. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, the homies are starting to grab weapons. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Said, you know, what, what, are you, what are you doing? He said, what you mean? You just said if I don't like it, we can handle it. Well, let's handle it. He said, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, we could talk about it. And the homie said, nah, that ain't, that ain't handling business. Not, not the way I, I was brought up. I want to handle it. During this interaction, the blacks see what's going on. So they rush over to, to figure out what's going on. The cops see the grouping up on both sides. They hit the alarm. Everybody gets sent back. I've told this story before. It's not going to change. This is what happened. Monster comes back. They roll the homie up. He had like two or three weeks to go home. And they told him, hey, we're going to validate you before you go home. So people were already upset that Monster side busted. People were more upset that the homie was going to get validated. Monster comes in talking about, he went to the homie that had the block A, can you come out? And you know what happened to the homie when that happened? He tells the hood, I said, we're going to roll him up. Nah, let me bring out a Southsider to tell you guys everything's cool. And he goes to a cell. That cell immediately was burnt. That homie was burnt. He was labeled now by the Huras because Monster did it. That's what a J-Cat does. That's a J-Cat move. A real G. A brother that knew how to do time wouldn't have been, oh, no, please don't take me to the hole. Let me go talk to you. Nah. He would have went to the hole. And he would have got out in 30 days or whatever the fuck it was. It's a J-Cat move. Okay? So side busting in a conversation is a J-Cat move. The antics on the yard are J-Cat moves. Going, telling the cops, let me talk to this Mexican. It's a J-Cat move, man. J-Cat move upon J-Cat move. Bad move after bad move. Okay. So. He got moved from our section, A section to C section. Probably because he fronted the homie off and they said, you know, that was a bad move. At least move him to C section. But he stayed in our building. He went to C section. Upstairs. He was downstairs in A section and moved upstairs in C section. Okay. The next day we have day room. The homie that has the block was told by the by the by the Yavero on the Mesa, hey, holler at so and so in your section at day room. He gets at me, hey homes, I want you to come with me. Boom. I don't do no talking. It's the homie's block. He talks, everything's respectful. Look, homes, you know, they all do respect. Whoop, whoop, whoop. They were respectful right back. Then they went back, like Chinaman said, they lied. They said, hey, that's they said that, that he's a rat, that he ratted on their homeboy, and that they want him off the yard. That created some more tension. The homie gets called to the fence by the Yavero and the Mesa gets questioned. I'm walking laps. I see him, get, but I don't, I'm thinking they're talking about what happened. The homie calls me over and he says, hey, homes, do me a favor. Tell them exactly what the conversation was. I tell them exactly what was said by both sides. And they were like, damn, man, serio? And I go, yeah. And then the homie tells me, hey, fool, they said that we called him a rat. I was like, what? I said, all right, homes, I'm gone. Because they got, it's now it's for them to decide. It's their discussion. I'm gone. Okay. 
this didn't in, in the whole the whole saying it, 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 it he was disrespected eight months prior to the riot and all that so let me count this off i got out of the shoe august 1st right so we'll count august september october november december january february we're gonna count august that's seven months the disrespect happened in august then at least i i believe it was august right the thing happened between the whites and the blacks now keep in mind from the very beginning the very first conversation i was there we'll take care of it then they went in light then when the 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 yavero on them did whatever they did it was cleared up we'll handle it don't worry about it we'll handle it okay the incident kicks off between the whites and the blacks and i'm going to clarify something again i don't like to do this shit but because of the picture that was painted in this two-part series i feel like i owe it to those that were a part of everything those that were there the family of sharky to keep it to, to keep it 100% real okay so the day that the 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 crip got his throat cut by the jcat white boy it's funny how that is he's there's no doubt he's a jcat but monster there's still some doubt jcat move after jcat move but there's still doubt okay it's cool it's cool it fits a propaganda narrative i get it but let's keep it real now when that jcat white boy slit that crip's throat that crip put it on him beat him down he did that when they ran yard that day the blacks all rushed the whites they did that that day but this whole narrative that the whites lost that war and my mom rest in peace the whites destroyed the blacks in that destroyed them the, the that thing in, in this we're gonna go step by step okay they released yard every day i talked about this they politicked on the fucking on the, on the warden they got the warden ran out by doing this they told him hey we can have this war last two years three years lock them down six months let them out they're gonna get off we lock them down four months let them off they're gonna get off it's gonna last for years or we release the yard every single day that's how we get rid of the troublemakers you know why because there weren't a lot of whites i don't know where this narrative is that the blacks were short I've always told you guys, it's, before I even say anything else, there's an officer that has a channel, he was there, he was SSU, no, excuse me, not SSU, he was on security squad, he's left a comment, his name is Dejanus, I remember Dejanus from up there, I invite him to go ahead and tell the story, where the blacks outnumbered, and, and his story of of what happened because i know he said some of it already okay but anyways the warden agreed to run yard every day the war lasted 31 days so this whole that 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 the rasa waited and they were scared and they wanted the number speed drop down and what the fuck Anyone who has done time, anyone who has gone to war with Mexicans in prison, no. They got fucking balls that drag. I don't hear no raza putting down the blacks. But for some reason, this, this war, this, this riot, like the footage, people don't want to believe the footage. People come with this, I believe it's racist propaganda. And we're going to get into some of that in a second, too. But that, that war lasted 31, I believe, by October. I think it was around the middle of October. Because remember, they were locked down for a second. Then they ran yard every day. I think it was the middle of October that the war ended. Started dying down between the whites and blacks. October. We're still in 99. Okay. 
But I want I want to say this. To my recollection, to the best of my recollection, from the incident when they rushed at yard recall, the blacks rushed all the whites, to when it was over between the whites and the blacks. One single white boy, one white man, one got stabbed in his side. During that incident, during that battle, during that war, I'm going to say minimum, minimum, 10 blacks got whacked by whites. Minimum. I don't see how the math adds up to the whites lost that. The whites were not deep. That's why the war ended. Had they had more there, real woods, skins, it would have kept going. I've already said the few whites that were left were cowards. Straight up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing for no group. The few that were there were cowards. And when the dude, the white boy came over, big guy, he was a big old fat pig. He lived in B section in the same building as me. And he walked up to a homie and he that was on the mesa and says, Hey, we're done. And the homie did say, how are you done when you're still here? Because that's normal, right? Like you were here when it started. When all the ones that were here, were, were here are here when it started are still here. You're supposed to get off. When it's on a new batch, then that's usually when it's like, okay, all these guys are new. They didn't have nothing to do with it. That's normally what happens, right? And the homie basically called him a coward and said, get out the way. We're going to show you how we really get down. The reason why he said that is because our issue was still in the air. Okay. So when that ended, I've also said, go back to the videos. We were going to get off in December. Now, it's true. A group was already in play for the Raza. They were trying to work with the black leadership. The black leadership kept saying, we'll take care of it. Of course, when they're going at it with the whites, they can't take care of it. Then afterward, the homies were like, hey, what's up? We're going to take care of it. We got, we got to take care of some stuff, but we're going to take it. That's what kept being said. Okay. A secondary group came out from the shoe with direct orders. When they came out, that's when the move was going to go down in December. Somebody locked it up. He was a resident. He wasn't, this dude should have never known nothing. He locked it up and told the Huras, you let these motherfuckers out right now. They're going to massacre the blacks. That's what he told them. They didn't run yard that day. Then it went into rock them to sleep. The black said, hey, what's going on with that? You know, the, you guys are going to get off. The homie's like, nah, everything's cool. Don't trip. See, now we're playing the same game. Right? But the thing was, the turmoil amongst the Rasa, I'm not going to get into all that. It was extremely serious. Another thing that needs to be pointed out, a fucking fact that needs to be pointed out is this. This whole story of the, the blacks were depleted. Again, let's say the war ended in November. So you got December, January, February. You had three months, right? Where nobody was doing nothing. But the thing about Pelican Bay, which makes it different from any other joint, and it's, it's, it's conveniently omitted out of the two-part series. Pelican Bay has a shoe right next door. You know who's in the shoe? Motherfuckers that put in work. Dudes that have exhibited violence, violent tendencies. People who have participated in violent acts against cops, against convicts. So you know what happens when a bunk gets empty? They bring a guy from the shoe and put him in that fucking cell, in that bed. It's not New Folsom. It's not High Desert. It's not one of these joints where you got to wait and catch a chain. No, 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 no. Is a black bunk open? Bring a black out the shoe. He's established. Come on, man. You guys don't fall for the bullshit. Solid blacks were replaced by solid blacks. Seasoned blacks were replaced by seasoned blacks. And what else cannot be fucking denied is 
everyone that participated in that riot, their ID was taken that day so that they can get the write up, right? 120 Mexicans, 120 blacks. How the fuck were the blacks outnumbered? And people are going to say, well, I don't, I see nothing but Mexicans in that video. Yeah, that's not the whole yard. If you look to the left of the screen, you'll see people fo- like bouncing off the fence over there. They were rocking over there. On that side of the yard, the blacks overwhelmingly outnumbered the Mexicans. Overwhelmingly. Okay. So we had an even amount of people on the yard. Was it evenly balanced? No. On the side you see, there was more Mexicans. On the other side, there was more blacks. Again, seasoned veterans of violence within the prison system were replacing other seasoned veterans from the shoe. Okay. The war happened. The riot finally occurred when Monster was told to roll it up. That can't happen. It just couldn't happen. And so people are trying to paint the picture of people were cowards because they tried to work it out and let people handle their own. Doubt, doubt what I'm saying. Those racists that hate Mexicans hate this video. Dubs is a liar. Dubs always make the raza look bad. I tell the truth, thing. And something else that I want to point out. Something that, go to my video. Go to my video, Why Mexicans Don't Give Blacks Head Up Fades. In that video, I break down how they don't give anybody a head up fade. But go to that video and look at the comments. Look at how many racists have commented in there. It takes 10 Mexicans for one black. We're more physical than you. We're superior to you. Well, then if you were outnumbered, it shouldn't have mattered. You weren't. By far, you weren't. But you can't have it both ways. You can't say Mexicans are cowards and it takes 10 of them to get one black and then turn around and say, yeah, well, we were outnumbered. What, a million to one? Because according to the racists, it takes all of Mexico to take down five dudes. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I'm trying to communicate with the people that do not have a dog in the fight. I don't. Nobody on the street should. This shit happened how long ago? 2000. So almost 24 years ago. And people can't tell the truth and accept the truth. There was no cowards. I'm not calling no group. Look, watch the video. You see Mexicans running towards gunfire. To handle their business. You see the one black dude. Handling business. Shout out to that man. I'm glad you survived that. Huh? Sergio. We respected every black dude that day that did not run. It was not personal. It was business. And it was fucking business. That should have not had to be handled by Mexicans. It should have been handled by the blacks. Because it had it been the other way around. The raza would have handled it like that. Because we're not going to allow no raza, no matter what faction it is, you're not going to allow your people, one motherfucker, to get out of line and drag everybody else into it. But see, like I said, this dude's running around, fucking J-catting ass on a fucking field, playing fo- a whole football game by himself, and his people don't look at that and see This dude is going to drag us into some shit. There was a lot of failure on the black leadership. Maybe that's who Damon's talking to. The black leadership on that yard that day that don't want to accept, hey, we fucked up. Every step of the way, the Mexicans tried to give us action and we misjudged them. And hell yeah, in December, when when, when that fucking dude, when he, his name was Pato, by the way, when he locked up, Told the cops, there's going to be a fucking massacre if you open these fucking yard doors. When he did that, and the homies were like, nah, everything's cool, homie. He just wanted to lock up. He just made that story up. Yeah. Just like the day that the blacks rushed the whites, and the whites asked him, is everything cool? And they told them, yeah. We ain't tripping. That was a J-cat. 
but a yard recall, they rush. That's a ploy that people use in prison. So I don't want to hear that, oh, why you guys say everything was cool in December? That's what people do in there. The element of surprise. But anyways, that's my video. Shout out to Damien, man. Again, I'm not going to have no hard feelings towards him. I've known him for a very long time. He's always been a good dude. I like his channel. I just don't want him to get caught up in the propaganda. I don't want to see his channel become a channel that's, that, that is divided by race. I don't do that with mine. I've always said, whoever wins or loses doesn't matter. But in this case, because people were being painted as cowards. And then oh, I almost forgot. Where in the hell is this whole idea that whites jumped in during the riot of February 23rd, 23rd, 2000? Who in the fuck created that line? Because let me tell you something. And I told this story and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it to this before I go. There was a black dude from the Bay Area. I don't remember which city. This dude, Damon, if you're watching, he was way bigger than you. Damon's a huge dude. This dude had to have a customized jacket made for him and a customized raincoat. Humongous. Tall as fuck, wide as fuck, just big. Right? They gave him a celly. Another black person. I think his celly was 17. He looked like he was fucking 12. And the big dude was fucking raping him. None of us, none of the Rasa liked it. This is another thing where we were like, how in the fuck do they let this shit happen? Not our business, not our politics. And I'm telling you right now. When we were talking before the riot, who's going to go where? Who's going to do what? Everybody wanted to whack that big dude for what he was doing to that little black kid. What he was doing to that young black man. Raping him. We all wanted to whack that dude. That was everybody's target. And you want to know the fucked up thing? He got away. And you know how he got away? He dove in a pile of white boys. Because the white boys were not participating. And when he dove in that pile of white boys, because the riot was supposed to go down a certain way. But somebody jumped the gun and everybody was, everybody was caught flat footed and just went to wherever they went. That motherfucker that was raping his Sally never got touched. But he dove in a pile of whites. That pile of whites stood up, went to another spot and sat back down and he ran over there again. So this whole thing that the whites jumped in, the ones that were left were the ones that said, hey, we don't want no problems. Why would they get in now? And who needed their help? But anyways, I'm pretty sure this that last part with that fucking big ass dude got this video demonetized. But the truth needs to be out there. That's what was happening in that cell. That's who the main target was. And unfortunately, he got away. Also, I'm going to say, and people that were there, they're going to remember him. He was in four buildings, C-section, upstairs. I was downstairs. The day, well, I don't want to say the day. Within several days of the riot happening, this dude was a super duper baller on the streets. Those, If anybody was in C-section at the time, they're going to remember. He started disrespecting even the blacks on the tier. Talking about all you motherfuckers are broke. All you motherfuckers are cowards. I could put a uh, full draw on everybody's book by everybody at TV and not even feel it. That guy. Anybody that was in C-section at the time, you know I'm telling the truth. You remember that guy. After the riot, within a couple of days, he got out a friend of mine that lived in C-section, corner pocket, upstairs, and told him, how much money will it take to end this? I lived in A-section. The homie fished the wheel out to me. Hey, homie, let's work this fool. Let's tell him, like, 250 G's, and then let's still whack them. I said, there ain't no honor in that. Tell them there ain't no pain. We're paying blood. So do you. So 
people who weren't there or people who have an agenda are going to say what they want and they're going to believe what they want regardless of the facts and the truth. I got nothing else to say on it. People believe what they want and it's all right. It's my video for the day. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.